Hey guys, Cutter Up Rob here. We're gonna have a little chat about lift pumps for your 12 valve. So these I have, funny enough, I was looking for a small bore piston lift pump. Um, and every one that I have here is actually a big bore, funny enough, which is probably not the problem that most people have. But anyways, that is apparently a problem that I have. And I usually actually don't keep used ones. So that's probably why. What we're gonna get talk about here is uh, the piston pump versus the, the VE diaphragm pump. Now, the diaphragm pump is an inferior design as far as I'm concerned. Well, let me get this camera a little farther away so you guys can see better. Crank shafts in my way. All right, here, that's better. So the, the, the VE lift pump, which is a diaphragm style, one, I hate because usually these damn plunger or the primers don't work this one actually does work but usually they don't work and these are bad for failing and they don't keep up this is something if you guys are running black diesel or alternative fuels i recommend doing this before anything myself myself personally because the ve relies very heavily on the oil diesel fuel going to the pump to stay lubricated and cooled so this is the piston style pump. Now you can buy, if you're on a VE truck, you don't need a big bore pump. I would just buy a, you know, a Carter or whatever it may be, a reasonably decent priced one. Because if it's a big bore or a small bore, it doesn't matter for the VE truck, unless you're trying to make a bunch of power with it, then you can go to the big bore. Because otherwise you're just, you don't need the extra fuel. It's more the reliability side of things. So these uh, diaphragm pumps actually, what I'm going to do is cut this thing apart and I'll show you what's up inside. I'll be right back. Hey guys, if you could like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. Back to the normal video. Let's see if I can not get shot in the face taking this spring off. So diaphragm pump on the inside. So, so that's your one-way valves. And then your diaphragm. And that is literally all there is to it. Just pumps. All you do is the, the lever moves up and down and then it does this. Right? So that's all it moves as far as that goes. So yeah, sorry. So this just goes over top of there. That's your one-way valves. So 90% of the time when these things fail, there's two options for them to fail. Either the diaphragm itself ends up with a hole in it and leaks, right? Or one of these diaphragms, this pump's disgusting inside. These little rubber diaphragms go hard and then they don't open and close properly anymore. But gives you an idea so how small those little holes are and how much that diaphragm moves, that's all, it, that's all it does. So now if you go to a piston style pump, basically there is this, the rod that goes in and out, right? And there is one seal inside here, but they don't usually fail. But you do need to, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the, it goes back and forth. This is your, your, your primer. So it's a separate unit completely to the actual, the, the actual pump itself. And this is the plunger. So the camshaft pushes this in and then it drives it back, drives the fuel back up. So there's a one-way valve, a little one-way valve inside here, but there's the bore, this bore, when it's sliding back and forth, like you can see how uh, none of the bubbles are actuated in all the way, but basically the movement of this going back and forth, that's why lots of guys want the big bore ones because the bigger the bore, the more fuel it's gonna move. For a VE, not quite as, have to have big bore in my opinion but it doesn't hurt as long as you're not over pressuring the system um, i do recommend putting a gauge on after you put one of these pumps together if you're doing it yourself make sure you don't have too much pressure uh, you don't need to leave the gauge on but i like to at least check myself personally so we have um so this is the big bore so that's the difference between the two very very simple this is a very simple pump this is a very simple pump these are just better in my opinion because they don't have a diaphragm to fail. They do have one seal, but very seldom they fail. 
Uh, sometimes the pl these plungers fail, but I don't usually see those plungers fail if, when you put it on a VE application because you're turning the pressure way down, right? Because usually, like, I ramp these things up to, like, 50 PSI on a P-pump truck. So you're going to be running on a VE truck, let's say, 10 PSI. So 10, 15 PSI. So considerably less pressure, right? So now talking, so we now know the difference between this versus this, right? So obviously... For any of you guys that are mechanically mechanical guys, you understand now what I'm talking about, or any of you guys, I guess, really. You understand the reason that these are these are better. I think these have a much less fail rate. Now, if you're putting this on a VE truck, you do need a spacer. Um, I'll put a picture up right here right now because I don't have one of the spacer kits for some reason. And you also will need one of these lines and one of these two springs. So... I was just monkeying around with this in the last week. And the reason that I wanted to talk more about this was I always thought that it was the big bore and versus the small bore. Small bore versus the big bore. Apparently that is not the case. Whether it's a big bore or a small bore probably does make a bit of a difference. But the spring side of things is something what we found when we were playing around, Nick and I were playing around with it, which is Nick is one of my buddy's brothers, but another buddy of mine, is look inside there and see the diameter difference in this one, the inside diameter versus this one. Now, the reason I say that is that you could use this spring, but it's going to munch up that, that screen eventually, where if you use this bigger screen or the bigger spring, it doesn't do that. Versus on this one, it actually sits on side there. So it actually has to do with this as well. And then also inside the pump itself. Where do we go here? Oh, yeah, that one goes there. That one goes there. Um, inside here, this spring does not sit in there very well. Like it sits on top of this cap, on top of the actual valve, right? Where this one sits where it's supposed to. So... This one is designed to go with this, right? Is to go with that pump. Now, this one fits inside here. And it also, let's see if I can pull that out of there quick. Also fits inside here like it's supposed to. So... It doesn't matter because these are both big bore pumps. So I just wanted to mention that to you guys. So I think likely um, when eventually when I have the website going, apparently, um, I'm going to sell these on the website for the only reason is they're hard to get. Now, I am going to put the part numbers for all of this stuff down below. So if you want to source it yourself, that's fine. You want to buy it off the website when the web website's live, that is also fine. Um, I'm probably not going to actually build pumps unless somebody really wants me to because sometimes the pumps are hard to get and I just don't want to, like I got so many things to do, it's just hard for me to have another thing to do. I'll sell this stuff so I can just pack it up. I can just throw it in an envelope and send it to you guys. Um, that's not a big deal. But, and it, these springs are really hard to get in Canada for some reason. I shouldn't say that. I don't know where to get them from. Maybe there is somewhere. But I will put a link down below for the part numbers for these, the part number for that, the spacer, and then uh, the part number for the pumps, this, these pumps that I was, I've been using. Also, um, for you guys, I have done a video. I will put a link up below, above for it for this spring, which is the big P-pump spring. So if you want to use the big P-pump spring, uh, I would also put a part number for this down. I will put a part number down below for this as well. Um, and you just take the pump apart same as you would with this. And, or with these springs and put it together. But with the P-pump, you don't have to change anything. Now, um, if you are running, uh, talking P-pump, if you are running, going to run alternative fuels in the P-pump, um, this not so much being dire need, I personally don't think. I would run it, but you don't have to. Um, but I would do away with your fuel filter housing or, or your fuel heater housing. Now, you don't have to per se get rid of the heater, I don't think. We're going to monkey around with this and see whether we can use this heater to help us heat the, the vegetable oil or black diesel. But not have to but there is a screen inside of here i did do a video on this too um you just if you just search it on the channel um fuel hill fuel heater delete um there is a screen inside here you want to do away with that screen 
Now, something else too that I don't know, and this is something we'll have to monkey with, is I don't know if these screens will be a restriction. Shouldn't be, because we're gonna filter it prior, but if you're not filtering it prior, only after, I think I'd be putting a better, I'd be knocking this screen out and putting a better filter prior and then not having this screen as a restriction if you're running straight stuff. Anyways, up to you guys, but we will monkey around with it a little bit. Uh, but I wanted to talk about that. It's getting now, the video's getting a little bit longer here, so I don't want to ramble on too much longer. Uh, like I said, I will put links down below, or I will put part numbers down below, and then when the website is live, there will also be links down below uh, in the description for doing this stuff. I think when I go to sell it, likely I'll sell these two springs as a kit, and then I'll sell this, the two springs, and the spacer kit all together as one. And then I will have these on there. Not that I'm going to make very much money on this stuff. There's more to help you guys out more than anything because there isn't, like, you guys can buy these on eBay. These, if you're in the States, aren't that hard to get. In Canada, they're a lot harder to get. But I guess, you know, like, if you want to, guys, if you guys want to help um, support the channel buying the stuff off the website when it's live, um, buying stuff off the website, you will be helping me help the channel grow, that type of stuff, so we can do cool stuff. All right. Like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments, and remember, it's not rocket science.